So I have these atoms here in, in this control region, this box, um, species A in red and species B in green. Um, and through diffusion, through this concentration gradient, um, we would expect that the atoms of A would diffuse uh, to the right. Now, we can kind of magnify or demagnify our, our view a bit. We could imagine that this box, for example, is situated in a pipe of some sort. So perhaps this little volume here is, is part of this larger pipe just here. So this corresponds to this side, and this corresponds to, oops, to this side. Um, and we would have this little imaginary surface in the center of the box here. So there is a contribution to the movement of species A through some sort of diffusive process, but there is possibly also some contribution to the movement of A through some sort of advection or something inside this pipe as well. So whatever whatever the, the, the underlying physical mechanisms are for the driving of, of the, 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 the flow, we can define the absolute mass flux of a species. So I'll give this by n dot, the dot over it, because I want to highlight that, that, that this is a, a flux. So this is the this n dot, the, so this is the absolute mass flux of species I. So this is in kilograms per square meters per second. And just to make sure things don't get confusing, or confusing I shall write it out explicitly. Absolute mass flux. And so this absolute mass flux of species I, well, this, this is quite easy to calculate because it's simply the, the density of species I multiplied by the velocity of species I. And what I mean by velocity of species I is that if we were to count, if we, if we were to go over all of the atoms and determine the, the velocity of each atom, we could take the average velocity of each atom of species I. And by doing that, we would get um, the, something that we can call the absolute species velocity. So this is meters per second, of course, because it's a velocity. And then this is the absolute species uh, velocity. Um, and then, just for completeness, this is kilograms per cubic meter. And so I'm talking in terms of mass here, but of course we can also talk in terms of um, molar, um, molar flux as well. So where shall I put this? Let's put this down here. So this is the um, same, same sort of thing. The, the absolute molar flux. So this is going to be uh, kilomoles per square meter per second and is given by um, the, the molar density multiplied by the velocity as again. So th this absolute species velocity, this is the same same quantity uh, here, but uh, we're now defining this. This uh, let me put this here. This is more. So this is the. Sorry, this is the absolute uh, molar flux. And then this. This is obviously uh, kilomoles per cubic meter. And then the total um, the total uh, absolute mass flux 
is simply the sum over each species. Maybe this is kind of obvious, but I think it's worth actually spelling out um, explicitly. Um, so the, the absolute mass flux of the system is, is simply the sum of the absolute mass flux fluxes of each uh, species. And similarly, um, in terms of um, this uh, absolute molar flux, we, we can take the, the system absolute molar flux as the, the sum over all of the species absolute molar flux. Now I'm doing this both in terms of um, mass and in terms of um, mole because um, I want to highlight a, a very important point in, and that is about the definition of um, bulk velocity. Now if we take for example, uh, let's do this. Let's do this down here. If we take um, the the velocity of the system in total, then we we can define. Let me just be explicit here. So this is going to be the the mixture. So the the total mixture. It's uh, mass average velocity. And we can, another word for this is actually the, it's often referred to as the bulk velocity. And to, to calculate this, uh, this is simply, we can take the sum over all the species um, of the, the density times the velocity over the sum of the velocities, um, which, as, I, as I've just said up here, is the same as, as saying, uh, where are we here? So this is the total, um, the absolute mass flux divided by the total mass, right? So the units of this velocity, of course, are still are, are meters per second. And what you can see is that all we're doing is we're taking a weighted average of the velocity of each species in order to get the, the mixture mass average velocity. And we can do the same, exactly the same thing for the, uh, for the molar. Let's, let's do this. So this is, this is a small v. Let's do a capital V here. And this is going to be then the molar, the mixture, uh, molar average velocity. And again, this can in, in some cases be referred to as bulk velocity. And this is as the um, mixture mass average velocity is it is defined or it is it has units of course as a velocity in terms of meters per second so this here um, it's the sum over the uh, molar the uh, uh, molar mass sorry molar concentration uh, times the velocity of, of the species over some of the molar concentrations which is then this capital N, so the, uh, the absolute molar flux over the total molar concentration. And again, this is simply a, a weighted average of the velocity, but now we're weighting, we're, we're taking this weighted average in terms of um, uh, molar density instead of uh, mass density. And this can be a little confusing, right? Because depending on if you're not uh, if you're not very rigorous you can you can refer to bulk velocity but um, depending on the situation um, that might mean the the mass the the mixture mass average velocity or the mixture molar average velocity 
And what's worse is that the, the mixture mass average velocity is uh, not necessarily the same, it's not that does not necessarily have the same value as the uh, mixture molar average velocity. And just to try and sort of give you a, a simple example to, to prove that, if I just move this up a bit so I've got some more space, then, I mean, let's, let's consider two species, uh, species A and species B. Well, the, the, if we want the velocity, this velocity, uh, the, the mass average velocity, the mixture mass average velocity to be equal to the mixture molar average velocity, then we need this sum over all the species I of the, of the density multiplied by the velocity of species I over the sum of all the, the densities to be equal to the sum over the molar uh, molar, ma uh, molar, molar concentrations multiplied by the velocities over the sum of the molar concentrations. And we can convert between the two, we can, the, the mass density, if we know the, the, the mass of the molecules of the species, then we can convert from mass density to um, uh, the molar density simply by multiplying by this. So th this is the, the mass density, just to be clear then, this is the, ki this is the mass density in kilograms per kilomole. So multiplying and uh, substituting these in, we have the sum over uh, the molar the molar density multiplied by the uh, velocity and then um, the mass of uh, species I over the sum of uh, the molar density multiplied by um, the mass, sorry, the mass of species I. And then this would be then equal to the, the molar density multiplied by the velocity species I over the, mol the sum of the molar densities. Now I mentioned a moment ago um, species A and species B, but perhaps I don't need to be quite so explicit um, because I think you can see from this equation here that um, the only way that we can get the mass average velocity to equal the molar average velocity is if the, the masses of each species um, cancel in some way. So if, we, if they were all, say, one kilogram per kilomole, then, um, then we could get these, these to be the same. Um, or perhaps if um, the, the masses cancelled fortuitously with the, the velocities and, and uh, concentrations and so on, then perhaps we could get them to be the same. But in general, um, the, the mass average velocity is not going to be equal to the molar average velocity.